United States President Donald Trump is set to add Nigeria and six other countries to a new list of countries on America's visa restriction. According to the World Street Journal, Nigerians would not be barred from entering the country, but would not be issued with certain types of visas. Other African countries to be restricted are Eritrea, Sudan, and Tanzania. Terrorism and overstaying have been listed as some of the major reasons. Still with me in the studio are two gentlemen, Christian Wogu, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for Pleasure. staying. And Pleasure of course, we have Ogochuku Ikako, political mm -hmm. analyst. Pleasure to have your company still. Thank you for having me. Okay. Nigerians who get, uh, they're not being banned, but they will get special treatment with certain uh, visas. Uh, does that come as a surprise to you, or what, what, what is your thought process when you, you, you read the story? Well, uh, it, it didn't come as a surprise. Uh, bearing in mind uh, President Trump's foreign policy and his stand on immigration thus far, uh, you can see that everything that is happening so far, it doesn't come as a surprise. There have been restrictions upon people from China, from Mexico, from different parts of the world. And for everything that they do over there, there is always a calculated reasons why they are doing it. So for me, I'm not surprised. Uh, Nigeria has been on the bad side of things in terms of our rule of law, uh, you know, uh, or how, how our democracy is, is a fledgling one and have issues that bother terrorism and insecurity. And uh, sometimes you see, when there's some issues, you, you see a report, a country report to say, telling the citizens, don't come to this part of Nigeria, don't go to this part of Nigeria. So, um, so having this, now, President Trump saying this now, that, was, that this is something that will come in place soon, it doesn't come as a surprise because uh, there are things happening here already that sense a wrong signal to that part of the world. So it doesn't yeah, come yeah, Before I come to you, Wogu, I want to stay with you still and ask that there's this um, special list that Nigeria was added to because of Boko Haram. Yeah. Would that maybe have any bearing as to um, us being put in this restricted list? Yeah, yeah, it is because, if, if, of course, uh, for example, the, the new list that was talked about, uh, that President Trump talked about at Davos have Sudan, have Eritrea, and if you know, uh, these places are places that have been uh, prone to conflict over a long period of time in Africa. So and Nigeria have more, close to a decade now sustained uh, terrorism issue, especially from Boko Haram. So and already one, one special watch list that came out in January with Uzbekistan, Sudan, and the rest of them. And now this is coming up. So and this now has more to do with travels, not just not just about terrorism, it has impact on uh, Im uh, immigration, who will give visa because people, some people have overstayed. And these are, these are part of the issues that, that, that has come up. And the American foreign policy is not as it used to be. Before, it looks a bit more welcoming. Now, they're trying to uh, go back to themselves. They're trying to pull back, not, not like they used to in the, in, like in, in the days of George Bush and the rest of them in the early days. So now it's, it's a little bit different. So for us, uh, it shows that, OK, there are some things that we're getting wrong on our end, and we need to fix it. And it shows that we have to look for solutions in ourselves. How to say, OK, what are we doing wrong? What is making people? Other countries, other same countries to say Nigeria, we don't, want, we don't want this with Nigeria, we're cutting this off with Nigeria. So he sends the wrong signal and it's something that we need to act on. Barista, we, we, we have, um, this is not the first time there's some uh, US visa issue coming up in Nigeria. There was a time there was a hike in the price, a drop in the diplomatic issues and all of that. What does this say about us that we are on a terrorism watch list and what should be the federal government's reaction to this latest announcement. Uh, let, me, let me take it from this um, angle, um, Felicity. I find it a little bit disturbing and maybe disagreeable, if not unacceptable, that some nations will be throwing the carrot of visa on Nigerians and um, using it as a kind of punishment. And um, most times, the people that really get to feel it are completely innocent and people who did not contribute anything to the reasons why these foreign policies are put in place. I don't think Nigeria deserves such a treatment. And um, I also find it, um, well, like my friend here has said, because there are things we need to fix. If we fix the things we need to fix, I'm not, you know, there will be no need to actually go out. Or so they what are the things drive. that the federal government needs to fix? Because, so, I mean, you have to make a place attractive for others to want to come and for those in it to, to want stay, to stay. To want to stay. Yeah, that's the point we're making. I mean, there are so many things we need to fix. We need to fix our health care, fix security, fix unemployment, fix uh, education, but these are fixable. These are things that with proper will, in a matter of months, if not weeks, they will just start running. 
And of course, when they start running, people want to stay, who want to actually go. In fact, the tourism will, act, will, will reverse. More persons will want to come to Nigeria. And I think that these are the particular lessons we should take away from all of this kind of threats that's coming up from whoever uh, against them. I don't like it, and I don't think um, we deserve it. I think that um, the world should be more accommodating and really know, they know where the problem is and go after it and fix it and not be, uh, get somebody or the people that are not concerned to become recipients of such um, measures. That's my take, with due respect. There, there are some who see it as a good thing, actually. Some pundits have come out to say this uh, would you know, get Nigerians angry and compel, you know, some to stay back and help in the process of fixing this country. Does that hold water for you? Well, you see, the, the fact is that people always travel, people always migrate, people always go to different places. Uh, if U.S. is not working for some people, some people go to Canada. So uh, Nigerians, will always, Nigerians are people that like to travel, that like to move. But the fact is that we should be ashamed of ourselves, that an outsider is telling us what to do. It took the intervention of the U.S. before our government released Shore. The intervention of four senators that wrote a letter and because they could have blocked the loan that the Nigerian government was seeking. But that, that nobody can, there is no categoric uh, no, evidence to that. The, there, was a, just, there was a letter to that effect that yeah, the federal that, government acknowledged. That we cannot see, say, let's, let's say, not put no, forward no, 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 uh, arguments that. We cannot say that's the I'm, reason I'm, I'm they were released. There was no, there were, what, are the, what are that reason? What are that reason? Right? There was a court this, order. The, the, the court order that they disobeyed, disobeyed, well, disobeyed, they, they disobeyed, they disobeyed, disobeyed. And if, 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 even, the, even the, the, they used the instrumentality of the state upon the, upon the poor guy in a court of law, which is an abnormality. So for me, it's easy for maybe a Lai Mohammed or, or the AGF Malami that have turned themselves to a social media person for the government to come and say this is wrong. But see, America doesn't owe us anything. They don't owe us anything. It's our country and we have to fix our country. And we, both of us are, 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 have been strategic partners for years in terms of democracy, in terms of uh, economy, in terms of uh, issues bordering security. And if your friend that have been doing business with you for years is saying, okay, see, friend, there's some things that is wrong somewhere. There's some, there's some issues that you need to fix, all right? And it, it doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, our leaders go to those places, they see things working well, they see things that are nice and good, and you come back and you do the opposite, all right? Terrorism is still on the rise. What did our government told, tell us that they defeated technically? And just a few days back, they just they cut off the, the, they killed uh, the former account chairman of Michigan, right? So it, it's not um, so it's not just it's not just about saying that okay uh, this is because it's all our duty. There's a part for active governance. There's a part for active citizen. So we have to we have to find a way to hold our government responsible respons because so for some people now, if America doesn't work, they will go to Canada. So we just want to run, want to live here, which is all fine. But if a country said that okay, doing this thing with you is threatening some of our key strategic interests. Right? Because if Nigeria borders is porous, that means there's a lot of ammunition moving across, across, across our border system. And it threatens both, both, the, both, both the security interest of, of America, our own interest, and that of our partners. So it's a responsibility that we have because countries are partners. That is, that is how it is. So, so if you're not holding down your own side of it and your partner is saying something is wrong, so we should look inward to ourselves. And it is a task that the president needs to do, all right? And we're not seeing that. He traveled to the UK, we didn't see many pictures. Okay, uh, I was just going to let you finish up uh, before I bring it. You're, you're somebody that's on social media yeah. uh, a lot. So if, if you were to make an assessment of Nigerians' reaction to this latest announcement, uh, what would it be? I, I, I think I, I, it was more like acceptance. Was, you, you agree with that? Yeah, I think, well, yes, acceptance to the extent that it gets us thinking. Nigeria is a great country, and um, left to me, nobody should threaten Nigeria, no matter who. It's, it's, it, we just need to sit down and work out this country. I guess that's the signals we are getting, and I can assure you that we can and we will. But do we have the will? Because, I mean, in the previous session, we talked about, you know, the same people that are um, breaking the law. To, to, I mean, to a large extent, are the same people that are supposed to be enforcing it. You know, if these people are breaking it, what hope is there that everything, I because mean, we can even start okay, to it, it, fix it? Okay, you see, the, the, the thing is this, uh, the, only, the only claim that Nigeria has in world politics is our oil. That is the only claim we have. That is the only claim we have as a nation. But you know the interesting thing? What our, about our population? It doesn't count. It's not a qualitative population. 
There are countries that are smaller than Nigeria that are doing greater, that far, far greater than us. Their GDP is, better than, GDP is better than our own. They have a better life expectancy, expectancy ratio. So our issue, and the fact is that American is pulling out from our oil. They don't need our oil as they used to. So shale gas and the rest of them are driving innovation now. And Nigeria is not as important as it used to be. Saudi Arabia has oil. So OPEC is not as, OPEC is not as influential as it used to be in the 1970s, in the 1980s. So a lot, a lot of this is changing in, in, in international politics and the dynamics of how countries relate to each other. So America is telling Nigeria that, OK, your oil is not enough for you to, to, for you to keep making claims. So there are things that you need to fix. We can't throw money around this. We need to fix insecurity. We need to fix our rule of law, our governance, all right? We can't have a fledging democracy where judiciary is doesn't, doesn't work. So it, 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 it's, it's a call for us to look inward and say, what are we going to do? And the fact is that the world is changing. And Nigeria, okay, you talked about, uh, uh, you talked about uh, attracting investment. Just last year, Ghana had the highest level of FDI in West Africa. December time, to early January of this year, we saw the number of people that went to Ghana because of the year of return. What are we doing? It's not about, it's not about being, being big for nothing. What are we doing? Let's look at this um, uh, strategy that Trump came up with, um, America first. Some say, no matter how you look at it, there's been some credit for consi um, consistency. He's talked about putting a restriction on immigration. He's been following through in spite of all the you know, noise that's coming with it. He's tightening um, borders and all of that. Is there something as critical as a lot of persons are of Donald Trump, but is there something to be learned from this America first mantra. Yeah, that's exactly the point uh, we've been trying to drive. And you've got a question um, somewhere in that I think I need to also deal with. Can we really do this? Yes, we can. And you ask how. We'll start by removing those people who are not giving good examples by the power of our votes. It's something we can agree to do. And we'll start from somewhere and it eventually gets done. It has to be Nigerian force. But then we need to have a major thing to learn. Like my colleague has said over and over, there are things to be fixed in Nigeria, and so that Trump is not just uh, blowing air, he's saying something. Nigerians are dying. Uh, kidnapping is not abating. Crime and criminality is not going any lower. Hunger is, um, is, 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 is rampant. So he is saying, look, Nigeria, you need to wake up. You need to sit up. And it's something we should take in good faith and go back. And so he's not just talking about America now. He's also talking about us. So we need to also learn that if somebody is so concerned about Nigeria, we should be more and we should be more concerned. We should work out this nation. And I believe, Felicity, we can. We can get this nation to that level where people scramble for Nigerian visa. I'm still going to put that question to you. Yeah. America first strategy or mantra that um, and uh, no matter what you say about him, there's been a level of consistency in trying to protect American interest first. Yeah. My question is, is there something we can learn from that? Yeah, it is what I was saying earlier, the, the, the dynamics of world politics has changed. All right. America, America used to have a very universal world policy, uh, uh, policy what I view. Right. But the emergence of Trump had people campaigning for pull back, come back. It's all about America now. We don't want to get involved in some things. We just want to pull our economy first, right? There have been trade wars with China and the rest of them. It's all about America now. It's, they're not trying to give you free deals. They're not trying to, they just want, they want, they want a better percentage because everybody is pushing for the pie, the world pie. America wants more of it. They have, they have, they have, a, they have, they have a, a, a mean competitor with China and China is asking for more. So it's, it's, it's all about them now. They're not trying to look out for your own interests. So for us, what are we doing? Ghana took all the FDI in West Africa in 2018, 2019. What are we doing? Why well, are yeah, dancing now? Like Mohammed is on air saying things that doesn't make sense to, to even a deaf person. So, and you, you can't attract investment when rule of law is a mess. That is what America is trying to tell us, all right? Because if I'm an investor and I want to put in 10 million US dollars or uh, whatever in Nigeria economy, I want, I want to be sure that a judicial system can protect my money. I want to be sure that, 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 that their monetary system can favor my, my investment. So if you cannot favor my investment, I'll take it to Ghana. I'll take it to maybe to the, the Middle East. I'll take it to somewhere in Eastern Europe. Do you so, agree with his position that it's possible for us to get it right with our votes? I, I, I agree, but hope is not a strategy. If we don't decide to fix it, we're going to be here. We have the, the, the highest number of poor people in the world, extreme poverty, is in Nigeria. 
the highest number of people with, with high school dropout is in Nigeria. So we are an atomic bomb that is waiting to explode. That is what America is telling us. And if we want, we can, we can hide our head in the sand, like you said, like an ostrich, and be dancing, you know, celebrating Afrobeat to the world. It's all fine, but we have issues. And we can't, we can't fix that issue by being cosmetic or pushing people out of Takwa Bay so we can create a city that doesn't make sense. So governance must work. And if it cannot work, America is telling us that this place, this place can collapse. And it's, there's a possibility that that can happen. Because it, they are not saying this. Terrorism is pushing every day. People are dying. So it, things need to be done. I guess that's where we have to wrap it up tonight. Thank you very much for your very enlightening thoughts. Thank Welcome. you so much. Thank you. Welcome. All right, and thank you for staying with us. Well, we're not done yet. We'll take our plus report, and when we return, I'll give my take. Do stay with us. The mother of Reverend Lawan Andimi came as a shock to many Christian faithful in Adamawa State. While those close to Reverend Andimi continue to mourn, some say his death is reflective of the security situation in the Northeast. This is a result of the insecurity that we have in our country and particularly in the Northeast. Impressions have been created and it's being given to people that Boko Haram has completely been defeated, which is not true. Reverend Andimi was abducted by terrorist group Boko Haram as they invaded Michika in Adamawa State in search of foodstuff and petroleum products. Information available says the group had demanded over 2 million euros, about 800 million naira for his release. Pastor Lawan was uh, uh, abducted by the members of the Boko Haram over two weeks ago. And they threatened that they will kill him if two million euro was not given. But at the end of the day, actually they, it seemed that they were not really interested in, in money. They were really out to kill him. He was beheaded yesterday. Because last week, they called the wife on Thursday and they told her that uh, they will be beheading him on Saturday. So they didn't do it on Saturday. They waited until Monday. And uh, LCCN pastor was also killed in Guerin by kidnappers as if the two were actually planned because they happened the same day and probably close to almost the same time. And we wonder the kind of country we are living in. The Adamawa state government, while reacting to the execution, described the action of the terror group as barbaric. The governor is deeply saddened. Uh, it is really uh, lamentable that uh, the matter concerning uh, Reverend Lawan Andimi, uh, who is the can chairman of uh, Michika local government that was abducted, uh, has come to this uh, unfortunate uh, end. Uh, the governor sends his uh, sympathies and regrets to uh, the Christian community, particularly the Christian Association of Nigeria, and uh, the uh, uh, Church of Brethren Mission, uh, EYN, uh, uh, particularly uh, the president, uh, Mr. Uh, Joel Billy. Today is a very, very sad day for uh, the governor, not only the governor, the entire people of Adama State. With peace finally returning to Michika community, residents will be hoping the federal government improves on the security situation. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. A simple definition of perception that works for me tonight is the one that describes it as the way in which something is regarded, understood or interpreted. See ya. If you talk from now to thy kingdom come about the strides you are making and the people still perceive that endemic corruption remains unbeaten in Nigeria, you talk in vain. I refer to the Attorney General's reaction to Nigeria's drop in a 2019 Corruption Perception Index report. Will we ever get it right in this battle? Our guest tonight gave some suggestions 
And to that, I would like to add, mine is more of a reiteration of the recommendations by the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center for Nigeria to tackle corruption effectively and strengthen our democracy. First, they said, is to strengthen institutions and preserve checks and balances. Second, is to close the implementation gap between anti-corruption legislation practice and enforcement. Third, they say, is to empower citizens to speak out and hold government accountable. And a fourth is to protect press freedoms so that no journalist has to fear for his life when reporting on corruption. This would work if there is a will. Is there one still to fight corruption? That's a big question. Let's hear from you. Please find and follow us on our various social media handles at Plus TV Africa to share your thoughts on the program. I am at Felicity underscore E on Twitter. Thanks for watching the program tonight. We're back again tomorrow, same time. Until then, please be well.